Welcome, everybody. This is Internet Marketing Unleashed. I'm Scott Patton, the Dean of Blogonomics and Podology. Welcome. I'm happy to have you joining us. This is a live blab, and it's also going to be on YouTube and on Facebook. And I'm going to be extracting the audio, putting it into Internet Marketing Unleashed podcast. My guest today is a very, very special guest. He's an author, speaker, consultant, coach. He's a lawyer and a nurse. And if that just doesn't tell you that he's a well-rounded, very, very interesting person, I don't know what does. Because if you, if you told me about nursing and you told me about law and you said the two could actually ever fit together, I would say you're absolutely insane. But he did it. He's also oh, yeah. the creator of the popular Real Fast training programs and they're designed to help authors, speakers, coaches, consultants, trainers, internet marketers, entrepreneurs effectively grow their businesses faster and more profitable effortlessly. And uh, his first product was the very successful and popular Speak on Cruise Ship programs. And I got that and I'm scared to think of how many years ago that that was. And and I and I actually kind of want to start there. And it's okay. Daniel Hall. Welcome, Daniel. Well, yeah, thank you, man. It's uh, an honor and a privilege to, to get to be here and uh, chat with you and everyone watching and listening and you know one of the if not the first product from you was the speaking on cruise ships mm -hmm. and i loved it and then of course what happened was i went and on a cruise right. and then i went on a second cruise and then i started thinking this is fun for 10 days but and i met some people on the cruise you know who were working and i asked them what it was like and they all loved it right and, but I started thinking, you know, as a 50 odd or 45 to 50 odd year person, however old I was at the time, would I really want to be six months on a cruise ship? Probably not. And the answer was no. It was a lot of fun for, and you know, I wish I'd have known about it when I was 22-ish, because I actually went to Australia and I lived in Australia for six months. And then I went all over Australia and I ended up at Perth and I was going to fly home. But the people that I knew in Perth that I had met on my travel said, Scott, Bali is just up there a few hundred miles. And then there's Singapore and Malaysia nice. and Thailand. And you're never, ever going to be in this part of the world again, probably. And I thought, you know, you're right. So I went and spent three months wandering through Southeast Asia. And then when I got to Bangkok, I was getting ready to get on the plane to go home. And the people that I had met up in that area of the world said, you know, Scott, it's one hundred and eight dollars. I still remember to fly to Kathmandu and be beside Mount Everest. And you're never, ever going to get to this part of the world again. And I thought, you know, you're right. So I flew over to Kathmandu and I spent five weeks in Nepal and India. Cool. And then I came home. And the reason I came home was I ate something in Goa that didn't uh, sit very well with me. And I ended up having hepatitis for three months when I got oh, home. Right. So it's much better to be home with hepatitis than it is to be in India oh, yeah. in the 1970s with hepatitis. I bet. So, so I came home. But if I had even con thought of or considered getting on a cruise ship, I would have done that. I could easily have spent a couple of years running around the world on a cruise ship absolutely. In, my, in my 20s. And that would have been absolutely wonderful. And kind of the point that I wanted to make was it's really important, and I don't think people do enough of, trying things out you know from the idea of exactly oh, you know do you like this do you like that and go and just find out and you if it, you don't it's not a failure like to me this the whole when i think of the what you taught me in terms of speaking on the cruise ships i mean it was really helpful for a speaking career forget about being on a cruise ship uh, but it also just opened up you know many many doors because i was always really talking about podcasting and blogging and from that it was well you can't really talk to cruise ship people about blogging, Scott. But what else are you interested in? Like pottery or the history of the place or these other things? And it was like, wow, like it just kind of, first of all, made me appreciate the things that I know a lot more. And right. then just opened up lots of, I wouldn't, I don't want to say like opportunities, but just like appreciation of things that I had done in my life that I really hadn't even thought about or, or appreciated. So from a personal growth perspective the course was was really really good well thank you yeah i appreciate you saying that and and that's exactly how i hoped it would be taken because it definitely is a you know was a personal growth experience for me for the years that that i did it before i even wrote the book 
So it was. Tell us a little bit about your experiences on the cruise ships. We just had, you know, I was basically a, a kid. Um, well, not a kid. Uh, I gra- had graduated from law school in 1998. And, and I think I was 33 years old then. So I was an older graduate of law school, um, had, you know, had an earlier life. And um, when I got out of law school, I took a job. It was, it paid okay. But, you know, for the amount of hours that I was working versus the, you know, my salary, it just, it it just really wasn't worth it. Um, And I really kind of started to get burned out on it very quickly and decided that I needed to take um, a cruise or a, a vacation, but I, unfortunately I didn't have a lot of money to do it. Uh, fortunately, um, the, the travel agent for the, uh, the law firm that I work for, that she'd called me with a, with a really good deal on a cruise. And I said, you know, this works on my calendar and, and it's, it's cheap enough and I could drive to Galveston. That's where it was going out of. Uh, and I'm in Corpus Christi, Texas. Uh, so, you know, I didn't have to buy plane tickets and all that. So I said, all right, I'll buy it. And then I bought, basically it was not the very lowest cabin. I mean, it wasn't on floor zero, um, (laughs) actually on floor three. Um, but it was a lower price, you know, insert inside berth kind of cabin, because that's about all I can afford for my wife and I at the time. So me being the kind of guy that I am, I'm, I'm always looking to, basically juice the deal. Uh, how, how do I get more out of this deal? Um, and in, and how we're, I was really looking for a way to upgrade my cabin. Mm-hmm. And so I'm thinking to myself, how could I upgrade this cabin without having to shell out more money to do it? So my thought was, hey, if I, if I were able to do that, then, um, <laughs> then this should be you know, a lot of fun. And I could add value to the cruise line by giving a talk. So I thought, okay, that's what I'll do. I actually then called the cruise line um, and asked to uh, speak to the entertainment department. And then when I got there, I said, listen, I'd like to do a um, a free cruise. Um, or actually, no, I said, no, I didn't know about free cruises. I said, I'd like to do a, a upgraded cabin um, for the cruise I'm already taking. And I gave her my time, my date and all that stuff. And she... Um, She's, you know, and then all oh, that was, this is a very important thing, by the way, I had, I had the presence of mind to write out some hot titles. Mm. Uh, so I had them in front of me when I made this telephone call. And the really interesting thing is, is that she was the exact person that I needed to talk to within the entertainment department. And it rung on like the first half ring. So it was basically, I don't know if she was getting <laughs> up out of the chair and she knocked the, the phone out of the cradle. Um, and she had to whatever it was. It was <laughs> destiny, I guess. <laughs> but um, she answers the phone, and I basically made this little pitch. And after I made this pitch, you know, I just basically heard silence. I, I she, she didn't say yes. She didn't say no. She didn't say anything. And I thought I was about to get, you know, basically cut down here. I, th- I mm. thought she was like, no, this, is, no, this isn't happening. So, um, but it's not what she said. This is what she said. And this is what kind of dumbfounded me. She said... Um, well, um, first off, I, we don't do upgrades, so you're definitely not getting an upgrade on this, uh, on this cruise. However, if you would like to come on this cruise on an audition basis, do this presentation and the presentation that she liked, by the way, was called eBay gold, the neophytes guide to making money with online auctions. Now this is circa 2000. So um, eBay was hot. Yeah, eBay was super hot then. A lot of people were um, interested in it, and there were quite a few people that were also very um, scared of it, right? Scared to do business on it. And uh, so she says, "Ooh, I like that one. I like that topic. If you come on and do that one, we will evaluate you, and if we like it, then we will put you um, on our." list of approved speakers and you could basically go anywhere you want. Uh, just let me know where and when you want to go. Um, and you can, you know, you can go and you could also bring a traveling companion along for free. And I did, I did kind of one of these numbers with the phone. I went, you know, I was just like, look, looking at the phone, <laughs> cannot believe my ears and what she's, what she just told me. And I said, yes, ma'am, I would very much like to do this. 
Uh, and she set it up. She, she sent me an email and she says, okay, when you get on the cruise, this is who you go see was the assistant cruise director. And I went and did the talk. Now, mind you, here, here's, this is another thing. I was not a professional speaker when I started this. Okay. Not a professional speaker. I thought, Hey, what the, Hey man, I can do it. You know, I could you know just get up and, and do my thing and uh, we'll see where this goes. Um, and I did that. She put it, she put me in this little room, um, in the, in the computer, I think they call it the computer lab or the computer cafe, uh, which was about a, a very small area. And they, they crowded over a hundred and some 120 people in this little teeny tiny area. Wow. So it was a huge hit. And I did my, I did my thing and, and I, I figured things went well because after the talk, um, there were like. 30 or 40 people that hung around asking me questions about eBay and blah, 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 and all that. And by the way, um, I wasn't like a eBay power seller or anything like that. Yes, I knew how to sell on eBay and had had some experiences there. Felt relatively um, proficient enough to talk to newbies about it for sure. And um, I just remember the cruise director and the cruise director staff passing that area several times as I, you know, <laughs> did the talk and uh, and then afterwards. So anyway, so they that must have been shocked. Ended, yeah, they, they ended on a sa- Sunday and I came back to my office. Um, I think Tuesday morning I was back in my office and on my voicemail was this person at the cruise line that just she just went. I mean, she gushed. She said, oh, my gosh, you, you are fantastic. Uh, not only did the, the, the passengers love you, but the cruise director and the, and the staff loved you. You are approved to go whenever you want to go. So I'm like, well, let me listen to that again, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and, um, and so we went and, and uh, basically that's what I started doing in about 2000. Um, it might have been 1999. I don't remember the exact year when, when all that came down, but it was early, early 2000s, late 1990s. And so I started going between two to three times a year um, on, on these cruises. And of course, what happened was, is that, um, as time went by, I would get more and more people, colleagues and friends and family, you know, and at, they were asking me, well, how did you do this? How are you mm-hmm, able to do mm-hmm. this? Right. And I would tell them, you know, so I, I, I it just, it kind of got to the point where it got, it got obnoxious. It, it, got, it got annoying. I was answering so many questions about this. And I thought, you know, it, it was kind of like a two by four to the head. Like <laughs> maybe there's something here. Maybe I should take this knowledge that I've acquired and um, and put it into a book. So I sat down and this is another, again, naive, you know, naive idea. I sat down and I was going to write write a three page article on, <laughs> on my on the steps. I thought, oh, yeah, three pages. I can say everything I need to say. Yeah, take well, 10 minutes. Yeah. And it was, yeah, exactly. Uh, 130 and 130 pages, and three months later, I had turned out this this manuscript uh, that became the Speak on Cruise Ships um, book, and and that's I think that was 2003 2004 that I did that, and um, basically I, I I took it and I put it up on a uh, on my own website, mm-hmm. and what I noticed was that. Um, that when, when we did that, and this is the other key thing, as soon as, as soon as the thing went live within about 20 minutes, get this about 20 minutes. Um, we had our first sale. Oh, good. Yes. It was great. And I didn't understand why or how that, that could possibly it's a be a miracle, right? Like yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. I, I'm, I'm not sure how, because I, I didn't promote it. I don't know why. And then uh, like an hour or so later, we got another sale. Like, we're all we're all at this, you know, and and of course, what happened was that you know, in that first sale, and especially after the second sale, you know, I get I get this squirt of dopamine in my brain. I'm like, oh, I like this. <laughs> this is great. Yes, and yes. I want I want this to continue to happen over and over and over again. Thank you very much. And um, and that's basically kind of got me in the whole internet marketing thing as an uh, as an aside is I had this, I had this basically this niche within a niche that a lot of people apparently, and there was no competition and then, and it was pretty sexy, right? People wanted to know how to do this. 
Right. Um, so that's how it all started. And basically, as time went by, I was able to uh, give up practicing law and I started doing this full time. Wow, that's quite a story. And I, you know, and I love the fact that here's an opportunity that came along, banged you over the head, and then you said, oh, you know, maybe I should take a look at this. And then and you just kind of take the steps and it opened up a whole. So what you're telling me is, is before the Speaking on Cruise ebook came out, you had no intention of being one of the top Internet marketers in the world. Um, well, I wouldn't say I'm one of the top Internet marketers <laughs> in the world, uh, but but I would say I'm I'm proficient at it. I mean, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm fairly conversant. Um, but no, the, to answer your question, um, I, that was, that was definitely really not an intent. Um, although I do remember when I was a kid being really interested in, in, in publishing and writing. Mm. Uh, so I remember saying, in fact, um, I was not a particularly good student. In fact, I was a pretty poor student with, um, with like, I'm, I'm sure if I were diagnosed today, I would definitely be diagnosed ADHD. Um, and so I was one of those kinds of kids in, in um, grammar school and high school that never did his homework, you know, didn't care to do my homework, didn't care what you told me, you know, you know, basically. Um, so I was not, you know, all, all, all that in a bag of chips when it came to uh, academics. Not until later anyway, uh, when I kind of figured out how to use my brain um, the way I wanted it to. Right. But well, I remember plus also <laughs> you were probably, if I can just interrupt you there for a second, because I think you made a really good point. Also, you were probably quite good academically when you were on a topic that was interesting to you, as opposed to something you were force fed in school. Cause yeah, as that, that, that I, um, I, I guess that's another reason why I went to law school is because I also, um, I have, uh, shall we say, problems with regimented authority. Um, <laughs> so, so what you're saying is you need to go to court to defend yourself. Is that what you're no, saying? No, no, no. I like I like not being in trouble. That's not that's not it. But um, but I like being able to read a rule um, such and interpret it such that the it, it results in in how I want it to result, not on how it, it was necessarily intended. And I think that was a big reason why I was interested in um, in law school. But that's an aside. Um, the, uh, the, the fact of the matter is, um, you know, I am really, really happy that, that it, it turned out the way it has, because it's basically opened up a whole new life for me with, with, um, basically whole, all new relationships and mm -hmm. much deeper, stronger, like, like my relationship with you, Scott, I mean, that would have never happened, but for, you know, cruise ship speaking and, you know, us doing a course together and, you know, all the, all this yeah. cool stuff that's happening. Um, and it continues to happen. It just continues to unfold in my, uh, because, and this is a, a key point I want everyone to, to, to take away from this is that because I was basically quiet enough to hear the voice, you know, sort of, maybe you ought to do this, you know, maybe you ought to explore this a little, and then, and then having the faith just to do it and not know what the next step was or what was going to happen next, just kind of go with it. Um, that, that, that's a, um, you know, that's a very, very cool thing. It's a very cool way to live life, uh, because mm -hmm. you're always, you're always in this uh, state of gratefulness and um, expecting great things to happen to you constantly. Uh, and that's a very, very nice thing. It's a very, very cool thing to, to live in that way. And, I, and, and, and I, again, it, it goes back to just kind of listening, being quiet enough to listen to the, the, the small voices, um, not, not to talk to you enough, you know, like I, I, a mental illness kind of thing, but right. those, those little gentle nudges that, uh, that that you just kind of feel and that you're just kind of in the pit of your stomach you like right hmm, I, maybe i maybe i ought to follow this one you know um and 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 because i was i was able to follow that um you know it's really just it been incredible uh the, the 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 life that it's it's provided and it continues to provide for not just me but for my entire family and now i'm you know i'm the only horse pulling the plow in in the family so i'm their, their sole breadwinner um for a lot of people and, and how nice um, is that you know for your wife to be home to be with the kids when they come home exactly exactly cool. I take care of my parents you know um 
my my uh, my eldest boy uh, Anthony works for me. Um, you know, and it's just it's just a, it's a very very cool thing, um, and and it's something I'm very grateful for every single day, every mm. single day. Nice. So one of the reasons I asked you to come on the show, Daniel, yeah. was the fact that you're launching a podcast. So that I makes am. me very excited. So tell us a little bit about it. What what are your plans for it? What do you want it to accomplish? Okay. So yes. Well, the so the, another thing that I did, again, following a rabbit trail uh, back when I was a kid, um, I actually started a radio show in Jacksonville, Florida. It was at um, WQBR in Atlantic Beach, Florida, and we played new music. And I had this radio background when I was in uh, just a just a pup, just a, I don't know, 18, 19, 20 year old. Um, nice. And <clears throat> and um, so I've always liked radio and radio was, was a lot of fun. And so I've always had this idea that maybe when I saw podcasting come out and I thought, you know, maybe I should be doing this. It was it was one of those kinds of things where I thought, you know, let, let me let me see how this develops. Uh, and maybe I'm going to want to dip a toe back in that arena. And um, it was just recently that I thought, no, this is the time. The time is now to, to do this. The time is now to establish a a listenership and a um, an audience such that that. This is the, I believe this, what we're entering right now is the golden age of, of podcasting. Uh, and, and I, and I, there's several indicia, several, uh, there, there's evidence of a number of factors that lead me to that conclusion. Not the least of which is, is that more and more people now have access to it, just like it was uh, a terrestrial radio station. Um, and, and especially with the advent of, um, radio or uh, internet ready cars where people are, are going to be able to, I was just actually watching a commercial yesterday um, where the, the, the new Cadillac, whatever SUV, they had, they had a, you know, advertisement on, you know, football, one of the football games. And I'm like, wow. One of their selling features was the fact that you could run podcast directly from your, your heads up display in, um, in your new Cadillac. Isn't and I'm cool? like, okay, see, th this is what I'm talking about. This is the reason right here. Um, and so I thought, okay, so this is the time. So we're going to do, my brand is real fast. So I've got real fast book, real fast, about 23 different products, um, mostly related to the author and speaker community. Um, some coaches, consultants as well. Um, but I decided that I would do a show based on my, my brand, which is real fast. So um, what I intend to do and what we're trying to do with our, with our podcast is essentially do uh, provide steps in every episode that will affect results, will affect a real change in the lives of those people listening. So we decided to call the show Real Fast Results at realfastresults.com. And it's actually launching this week. So that so I'm so glad that you asked me to do this interview this week. So y'all need to go check that out, realfastresults.com uh, forward slash iTunes. That will actually take you directly to the iTunes link. Um, but the, the idea is, is that yeah, every every episode I bring on experts if I'm not doing it myself. Um, where it, they're they're almost like miniature information products. Mm. So the the result, um, the result that we're promising in the title of the the podcast, um, we talk about why you want that result, the steps to achieve that result, and um, and then essentially have um, a a way for people to follow up with uh, with the with the with the the guest um if they, if that's what they want to do but right. but whereas other podcasts i've noticed um they will focus on either the accomplishments of the guest or the accomplishments of the host you know they'll uh, post uh, income statements or whatever which is great i have i i have no issues with that but it just seems like i wanted to distinguish myself in the marketplace and and put my listener on a pedestal 
you know, uh, uh, really celebrate my listeners um, and my my watchers, my audience members, their accomplishments and their results. So what we're doing um, is we're inviting people that listen to the podcast. If you use one of the episodes to get any kind of result, good, bad, and different. Um, and we want you to come back and we want to, we want to basically report on you, right? We want to let, we want to let those folks know, um, that it's, it's, you know, what, what's going on. And it's not just the successes either. It's the failures, right? Because every, everyone can tout, you know, perfect successes, but, it, but we all know life isn't like that, right? Life is, is definitely, you know, very, um, sigmoidal, you know, you're all, you're going this way and that way. It's not a straight line. And that is a, that's an issue. Um, and I want, I want folks to see that, that, you know, you could take a, a particular set of steps, apply them in your business and get some sort of result, at least close to what we're promising. And if, if you've, if you've done that in a particular show, um, and it's particularly if you've done it and, experience challenges and then overcame those challenges, we definitely want to talk to you, right? We want to feature you in a future podcast. So, so I actually have that set up um, at realfastresults.com forward slash results. People can come and um, tell me their, you just put a voicemail in or a video webcam thing um, and, and tell, tell us what show that they followed, what their results were, what their challenges were, how they overcame those challenges, et cetera. And, um, we, we're going to do some, you know, give some people some, some great, um, promotion, um, uh, for, for doing that. If we use them, uh, their stuff in our show and, um, and then also give them some swag, give them some great t-shirts and, and, um, you know, s- s- good stuff for, for doing that. Uh, and I think that, that, that way, um, we will, we'll do a lot better, uh, at, at actually helping listeners and, and audience members in, that listen to the show on a consistent basis. So that's kind of the idea. What you think? I think it's a brilliant idea. Focusing on the audience, focusing on results for the audience. What a concept. And like you say, most people don't do that. It's here. This is what you can get if you do what I do. And here's what I did. And I'm really great. And unfortunately, you know, you're not so too bad. It didn't work for you. Or it's three years later, and that's why I'm sharing it, because it doesn't really work anymore, but I got all of this backstory that I can use to show you, and uh, and away you go. As you were talking, Daniel, I, I there was a question that kept popping into my head, and I was listening so closely. Like, I learned that from you earlier in this show, because uh, everybody... And I have my own kind of philosophy on this, but a lot of times people say, how do you make money with your podcast? A question that I hate, but... Since you are starting your podcast, yes. and I'm assuming that as altruistic as you are, you have a you know you have a, an expectation that this is going to do something for you, as well as you doing something for for your listeners. And so, how do you like when you look at your podcast? How do you see that fitting into your business in terms of uh, you know like how do you expect it to make money for you? Oh yeah. Okay. So that's, that's the money shot, isn't it? Um, it is. <laughs> literally. Um, so yeah, the, 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 the clearly, um, I, I don't run a charity. I run a business and I, by the way, I make lots of money and I have no compunctions about saying, nor do I make apologies for it. I'm in business. Um, mm-hmm. so, but at realizing that I'm in business, I'm in business to serve, right? So, you know, the, the amount of money you make in the marketplace is directly proportional to the value that you're bringing that marketplace or the niche that you're serving. And the more that you could do that, the more you're going to uh, make you're, more money you're going to make, period. OK, um, so what I'm what I'm going to do with the um, with with my podcast is like we're, we're starting we're launching um, at realfastresults.com. Uh, with five shows and um, because my, good, my love, good strategy. yeah, my, my love is a digital publishing. We're going to do a season on just digital publishing, but not, not to be basically an internet marketer necessarily. That's all cool. But, but, but basically fitting a um, digital publishing um, module of your business 
regardless of what business, uh, regardless of the business you're in. So it, it basically, you could bolt on, bolt this sort of uh, onto any business, any business. And so with the first uh, five shows, they're, they're, they're going to, to um, like the first three or two of the first five shows um, actually ha were with people that I've done webinars with in the past that had great webinars um, related to certain aspects of, the, of digital publishing. Like I had my friend uh, Tony Leidig on who is just like a master at using public domain content to 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 put together great quality products. Mm. So show number zero two, realfastresults.com forward slash zero two will take you to that show where Tony uh, basically discusses how to go about doing that specifically with magazines, by the way. This is a really, really cool thing, by the way, because you can absolutely go and get magazines uh, that are out of date, that are not out of date, but they're out of copyright that you could put, use um, to put together really cool information products and whatnot. Um, so that's one example. And if you and I say in the in the show at the end of you know the, the show notes, you'll see a, a old um, webinar that Tony and I did. Um, and yes, there is a there is a there is an offer at the end of that webinar. You don't have to take me up on it, but but um, but it's damn good information. You know, it's really good information, regardless of what you do with the offer. And if you want to take the offer, by all means, go ahead and take it. So you know, it's it's also about being upfront with with your folks and just letting them know, hey, yeah, this this is this is a business. Um, and uh, and, you know, if, if as long as everyone understands and you're and you're authentic and um, you know you're trying, uh, you you just you just tell it like it is. Mm -hmm. um, you're you're going to chase off people that you don't want anyway, okay? Which I have no problems with. Um, and you're going to attract those people that that are right for you and that do resonate with how you do things. So yeah, this is this is how this is one way that I'm um, that I'm um, going to do that. Um, you know, and and I think that that's a really really important thing that you you absolutely have ways to monetize your podcast otherwise you know how can you keep doing it unless it is a charity you know unless somebody else is paying your bill to go and produce it which is cool i have no issues with that either right um but again that's a that's a super important um point of how i've approached uh podcasting we'll see how it turns out i mean uh, i i would i would love for folks to go, go check it out i mean i don't i certainly don't have all the answers I do not have all the answers. Um, I, I just, again, I, I listen for that small voice and, 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 and let it guide me at, as to what, you know, what I should be doing um, with aspects of my business. And, you know, if you're focused on your clients, um, if you're focused on your marketplace, and even if you screw up, and by the way, I do that all the time. I am, again, a, an imperfect creature. Um, and, but if you're, but if, but if folks know in the long haul that your heart is in the right place, um, they stick with you. And that's a very, very cool thing, uh, because you know, no one, no one here is perfect. No one does business perfectly. Um, so that's another, another aspect of it. Um, I think to, to longevity in the marketplace. So, so I want to jump in. Is that responsive to your question? It is. And I want to jump in with a couple follow-up questions. A really quick one is how long do you plan on making them? How long do I plan on making the podcast? Yeah, like in terms of 10 minutes, 20 minutes, two hours. Okay. <laughs> this is a good question um, because the first uh, five of them, I think were uh, between 25 and 35 minutes. Okay. Um, when I first started out, um, I, I was trying to, to do, um, you know, a lot, uh, trying to do as, 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 as short as possible. Um, the more interviews I've done, because I'm several, you know, I'm way ahead now um, in the interviews I've done with for the show, they've gotten longer and longer. And I want to, you know, try to, again, I want to gauge the audience to tell, have them tell me, you know, they want them longer, they want them shorter, you know, what, what is it that, that you want, right? Um, and I think that's a really, really important uh, thing as well, to listen to your audience. Right, right. Cool. And uh, so I want to summarize what I think you said in terms of, uh, we'll call it the funnel, right? Someone tunes in, they listen to the show, you're right. talking about a specific topic, and you, in this particular case that you were talking about, you've interviewed someone that you did a webinar with before. Yep. The webinar mm -hmm. was a successful webinar in that it converted people into sales. 
So right. now you're you're almost revisiting what you've created before by having that person on discussing and get, now giving your audience some specific tasks to do that will help them in their business. Yes. And then saying, OK, you know, like we've talked for 20 minutes about this. We've given you some tasks to do. Sammy and I, we did a webinar a little while back and we talked about this in more detail and we've got great more information for you. We've already established we've given you some good information. Here's where you can get more good information. And I'm going to be up front with you. It was a webinar we did. We have a real fast product for sale at the end yep. of the webinar. Yep. If you want to get it, great. But whether you do or you don't, the information adds to what it is we've discussed now. Exactly. And what I love about that is you've, you're taking something that you're created Whenever it was you created, like last week or last month, and exactly. you're you, you're bringing it back up to the front. Like, how often do people create something and then it just sort of you know, sits on the digital bookshelf somewhere, gathering digital electronic Never. dust? Again, right? Never. Yeah, and I think that is such a waste. It is a waste, and and I I was doing it for years myself. Years I did that. And it's, and it's really a travesty because with a lot, especially the ones I've chosen to bring back, um, the, the, you know, there's really good information. I mean, it is supremely helpful stuff. Otherwise, I wouldn't put it on as a, as a potential. So, yeah, uh, very, very. So that's, that's one monetization method. There's another that I have a, um, a free course. Um, where I show people, it's a seven-part free course that, I, that I'm going to advertise. In other words, I'm going to be my own sponsor, okay? Where people, so I have a, I have a program called Real Fast Book, right? Yeah. And it teaches people how to write and, and publish Kindle books, print-on-demand books, et cetera. So I, want, I put in a commercial, essentially, for my, uh, my Real Fast Book program. It's just essentially a seven-part step-by-step -step video tutorial series on how to go about writing and publishing a print-on-demand book, okay, like this, right? Right. Um, and, 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 and again, it's, if, I bring, if I bring content to the marketplace, it's damn good content, all right? And it's, and it's free content. Um, and, and so that's another thing that we're doing as well. I'm, I'm going to be a, a sponsor of my own show by sending people to a product that will eventually bring money in, okay? Right. You go so this is also days. a long-term play. Oh, it's everything I'm doing right now is long-term. I mean, right. well, yeah, potentially. Yeah. Um, and then third, as this show grows, um, I'm going to bring on sponsors. There's, uh, there's, several, um, there's, there's several sponsors I want to bring on to the show. For example, I love there's an app called Headspace that helps me almost daily. Uh, with meditation and and whatnot, um, and and I, I want I want them to sponsor my show. I, I think people should be um, pe people should be downloading and using that app. I mean, it's just it's an incredibly great good app. There you so, go, Headspace app. Do a search on it and get it on your smartphone. Yeah, it's really really good. Uh, you get the first ten days, I think, for free, and it'll actually teach you how to uh, to practically meditate. So um, nice. And, uh, and, and yeah, and, and what, you know, it just creates more headspace so that you can have more bandwidth to do what you need to do in your business. Uh, that's how I look at it anyway. Um, so that's another, that's another thing. And then, and then, you know, basically list building, list building all the time, list building uh, it, you know, if you're in, I don't care what business you're in, if you are not building a list and when I say a list, let me be real specific here. I'm talking about an email list. Where, where you control the platform, where you get to say, oh, yes, I want to I want to reach out and touch my community. OK, not not Facebook, not social media. I mean, it's good to have that. I'm not saying not to not to right. have that, but, For sure. but it's all, it's it's what it's the platforms that you control that you need to be building. OK, that you absolutely need to be building like like an email list, uh, for example. So that's uh, you know, it's actually uh, for some reason kind of weird um, to sell that. You know, you say this to people, and they're they're like, "Oh yeah, great," and then they don't ever do it. They yes. never do it, and it it drives me. If if there's one frustration I have in in business is that you tell folks to you know to that you know it's really good for them, but then they don't do it. There's like this mental block, and and that's the other thing I want to do. We're gonna have Jack Canfield on our show, um, talking about mindset and and how important. Um, that is for um, 
for, for actually getting stuff done in your business. Because if this is not screwed on right, you're not going to, you're going to go nowhere fast. You're just going to yes. continue to spin your wheels. You're going to say, yes, I need to build a list, but then never do it. See? So I want to help those folks. I really want to make a palpable, real difference in the lives of my listeners at realfastresults.com. Perfect. All right. So what I'd like to do, Daniel, that was wonderful. And I think you covered it perfectly. And then I'm going to just take that little clip. And anytime anybody asks me, like, how do you make money with your podcast? I'm just going to get replay my it. little phone and replay <laughs> it. Yeah. And tell them to get their headspace on. Right. So there's two things that I would like to see if we if you're agreeable that we can do. One is and first of all, and I hope it looks the same on your screen as it does me, is I'd like to talk a little bit about podcasts into Kindle and print on demand books real fast. And let everybody know that if you click on this, it's a free coupon. You get this. It's a $20 course for free on Udemy. And you get a really some really great strategies that you that are actionable. This, this course actually follows exactly what this man just said. And I hope when I get the video of this that I'm actually pointing at you, Daniel. And no, you're not. not. The other way. There you go. <laughs> you got it now. See, on my screen, it's there. You're there. He's, he's up here or he's down. I don't know. So you want to listen to this fella right here, okay? So there's the – so podcast into Kindle and print on demand books real fast. So tell us just quickly why somebody should have a book. And then the second thing I want to ask you before you answer that question is, is mm -hmm. I've got at least one person that wants to jump on. So what I'd like to do is kind of wrap up this is in terms of our formal podcast and then open it up for anybody that wants to join in and chat and blab and talk about anything. My experience has been when I open up the doors and I let somebody in, they normally take over and we just get totally out of control. And I understand now why guys on talk radio have that mute button and they say, you know, the guy's talking, 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 and then all of a sudden he's quiet and the announcer comes on and says, well, you had a really good run, Daniel, but it's time for us to move on. <laughs> now I understand it, right? So why should somebody have a Kindle book? Why should somebody print a book? Let's do the, just to get to the bottom line real fast. All right. So here's the, here's the story that um, the, the fact is books are twofold, um, actually threefold, something that you should do. First off, it's like an Uber business card. If you have this, uh, have, a, have a book um, that relates somehow to what it is you do, and you're at a an event, you're you're at a networking thing, whatever. You're meeting somebody face to face, and you hand them a book. Your stock goes up. Okay, they start. They go, oh, this guy, this gal took the time, effort, and energy to take something that they know and put it in the form of a book. That makes you special, right there. Even if the even if the rest of the book is trash. Okay. Just, just you doing that because a lot of people won't. Most people won't. Okay. <laughs> Let me jump in here. When, when they do studies, they find that no more than the first three pages on average are ever read in a book anyway. So just make there sure you that you edit so make the sure first three, three pages. pages and 74.6% right? <laughs> of statistics are all made up on the spot too, by the way. Just wanted to point that out. <laughs> lovely, lovely. <laughs> just in case you believed my Noted. stat. I just made it up on, on the spot. But I have, you know, a lot of people have said, yeah, like nobody reads the, you could, you know, my favorite book too, just to go on a totally different tangent is about this thick if you're laying it down and it's uh, what men understand about women. And when you open it, it's oh, all Cindy blank. Ashman. Yeah. Cindy's great. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great book. And there's completely blank, right? Yeah. Completely blank. It's, just, yeah. it's like, it's huge. It's just all blank pages. Yeah, all blank. Uh, so that so when you have a book, you're the author. The author is the authority. Now it gives right. you status and credibility. Oh, yes. That that's 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 number one. Second, of course, you can make royalties from your book, which is a nice thing. Obviously, um, passive income, on passive income, income now, uh, and you know it. For most books, that's not a lot of money. I mean, to be frank, um, you know, even if you have relatively successful books, it's still not a lot of money, unless unless you do the third thing which is to build offers in your book. And I'm not talking about like blatant offers. Um, well, yes, one or two blatant offers is cool, uh, but it has to be tailored made to the subject matter of your book such that somebody reads your book and they say, um, wow, this person is really, really good 
and knows what they're doing. And I, and I can see what they're saying work that works for me, but you know what? I'm, I need a, a higher level solution than what they've outlined in the book. Let mm-hmm. me reach out to them to get their next hire. Um, you know, their the coaching program, program, their work, yeah. go to their workshop, go to their retreat, yeah. buy their yeah. video course, whatever. Yeah. And, and yeah. And, and I, I actually did an interview at realfastresults.com um, with Tucker Max, who uh, we talked about that specific thing, uh, how to sell high ticket offers from within your books. So that's yet another reason. So going back to our, our, uh, our Udemy course that, that folks can get a free coupon for by clicking um, below, I guess, that way. Uh, <laughs> um, and, and essentially they could take their podcast if they're, if they're podcasters and, um, and actually make books out of each and every episode, which by the way, I am doing, Scott. I am, yes. I, I, yes, I am doing that. Uh, the first, uh, they're they're in production right now. So the first five books, and uh, when when we get that, we'll make sure to post it within our course on Udemy. Um, but but essentially using the same step by step strategy that that we outline in in this course. So p- folks should definitely check that out. If especially if you are doing any kind of audio, most especially podcasting. Absolutely, I totally agree. Wonderful. Daniel, one last time, where do people go if they want? Realfastresults.com? Yep. Um, Forward slash iTunes? Yeah, forward slash iTunes will take you to the page, I hope, um, (laughs) that's supposed to. Um, And uh, (laughs) uh, you know what? You know, it's funny. You mentioned yesterday, um, you you told me yesterday that that my iTunes, it would, because we're actually, our official launch is this Thursday, the 26th. Um, and I was I was kind of freaking out about it, and and you came to my aid, very kindly. Thank you, sir. Uh, so don't worry, they'll 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 have the link up. They'll have it uh, up in the store way before then. And I think, oh, thank God, thanks for uh, you know Scott. Um, and and sure enough, it it came through about two hours ago. I clicked on it, um, and it's still not available yet in the iTunes store. But it said it'll be a couple hours. So as soon as it's hooked up, it will go to real fast. <laughs> results.com forward slash iTunes and it'll take you to the iTunes and by the way the um, all the episodes are are available for those folks those folks here listening now if you just go to realfastresults.com um, all of the episodes are currently up there okay. and you can listen to them right right from there uh, so that's that's ready to go right perfect now. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So thanks for joining us, uh, Daniel. I really appreciate you. I really love having you on and, and working with you on different projects. It's always a lot of fun. This is the Internet Marketing Unleashed podcast. I'm Scott Patton, the Dean of Blogonomics and Podology. Thanks for joining us, everybody, and we'll see you next time. And Bye-bye.